Let's have a look at how we can turn these white, off-cut pieces of paper into warm caramel colours for our journals. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. So today I wanted to have a look at the off-cuts. When we made this journal, this was A4 pieces of paper, which we tore down and these were the discarded pieces. We've then connected the pages with our hinge connectors that we made and that gave a wider page than if you were to fold an A4 piece piece of paper in half and create an A5. So I hadn't um, realised where I'd put these, they were misplaced and now i found them and I think we've ended up with 24 pieces of paper just lurking around the craft room and uh, I'm going to dye them today. So what I want to do is sort of roughly half them, one half I'm going to do in tea dye and the other half in an avocado dye. I think you've seen me doing dye before but it's always nice to just keep refreshing because the techniques change every time. So they fit quite happily in this little tub here and I can be quite easily at the desk just doing this but what I will do is I'm going to put on a pair of gloves so you could use cleaning gloves, rubber gloves and it's just because the brown stain from the tannin in the tea, I um, shall be using normal black English breakfast tea, uh, it will stain your nails. So for this you're going to need some tea bags and some hot water. I found these at the back of my cupboard when I was clearing the cupboard out because I wanted to move things around the kitchen. And these were tucked right at the back and they are black tea and I don't know what they're doing in there or how long they've been there but they're definitely, you can see, they've even changed colour so they are pretty old. Right, so I am using scrap tea bags to make my scrap paper for my junk journal so everything here is junk. <laughs> um, right, then another idea is also after, after we've done this we're going to save the tea bags and we're going to take the tea leaves out, compost them or sprinkle them around the garden, that's fine. And then what you're left with is these tea bags which you can wash out so that they haven't got any residual tea in them and let them to dry and keep them because I have another craft coming up and I'm going to show you how we can make a mock leather pouch using our tea bags. So if you want to hold on to your tea bags and if you don't drink tea and you haven't got tea then maybe have a look at coffee filters. If you've got any spare coffee filters you want to make sure all the tea leaves have been emptied out that I've missed one there and save them uh, all the coffee filter papers. So that will be a craft coming up, just put them to one side and we'll be doing that in the next week. So th for this I'm going to have, um, what was that? So we've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go with ten. I want a really rich dark colour if I can get it and all we're going to do is essentially make a massive cup of tea and you can see that that is changing to that lovely rich colour and we're just agitating it so that it all moves about and the and the tannin and the colour dye the tea stain is released so we just really want to, that to sit for about two or three minutes so just keep it moving and you don't really want to be dealing with roasting hot water putting your hands in it so it would be best to be left for two to three minutes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shot of cold water in there and then I will be able to dunk my papers in right water going in and then that's a really nice mahogany colour so we are going to put in the papers and we're just going to put them in one by one. 
If you put them in any other way, you'll get white bits in the middle and you because they'll stick. So we're just going to do that and allow the paper to just soak up the dye. You'll have lots of dye left, so you'll be able to keep that. So this is great because this will make a nice lot of tea stain and it really is as simple as that. What I would do with the dye is I put it in a jar, I do a couple of tablespoons of white pickling vinegar, white distilled vinegar and then it will store for about three months in the cooler cooler months if you put it in a cool place put it in the even have it in the garage so it's not in a heated home environment it will store tea well some of the other botanical ones cabbage and things like that they can be go a bit grotty but I've just I've got one that's eight months old and it's only just starting to go funny so I should have used that one I don't I won't use that now but uh, that you, they do, they do last. They do store in a jar, in a pickling solution, and they don't lose their effect to dye paper. Um, now, another thing we could be doing, if we were going to be very professional about it, is put baking powder in here, and that reduces the pH. If you've got paper with an acid um, treatment going on, they are going to disintegrate. But the rate in which that would happen would would take years um, and disintegrating papers is arguably what we're all about <laughs> so you have to weigh that up um, it it would take a very long time for that to happen um, but for archival reasons it may be a good idea to just add a small teaspoon of carbonate of soda So these aren't going to have any special effects on them. They are going to be plain papers and that's very nice. It's a nice background to work on. So those are going to sit there for 10 minutes and then I will pull them out, put them on a tray and I will dry them off in the oven when we start doing the cooking. I'll use the residual heat to just dry off my papers and I'll come back and I'll show you what we've got. It's all a big experiment, it's all part of the fun and uh, you just do whatever you feel right because this is, this is a way to relax and, uh, and if you enjoy cooking and a little bit of alchemy then this is going to be right up your street. If you can't bear this, uh, what you could do is get the very strong solution, uh, put down some papers and paint it on with a nice big brush and then just leave it to dry in the warmth of a room somewhere or if you've got a nice sunny outside you could just let them dry in the sun but for anybody winter crafting you are going to perhaps if it's cold outside you'll struggle to keep your papers dry uh, with outdoors because they will either get damp or they'll blow away uh, so you may have to result in keeping them near a source of heat and uh, resorting to putting them in the oven and baking them which gives a very interesting look as well. My inner child is taking over and I'm just going to take one of the sheets of paper here if I can get one separated. It's also a good idea to turn them over. You can see how lovely they're going to be. Let's just see if I can get one sheet here. If there's anything on the paper, you can see it's already doing its own natural age spots, which I think is really brilliant. So I've got this one sheet here. I'm just going to screw it up very gently. I don't want to put too much pressure on because I don't want it to rip if I can help it. I've, I've squashed that down like that and now I just want it to... Mm. Very difficult. Now I'm just going to put it back into the die. I don't want to pull it around too much, but just the the water will allow me to release those folds and gently. It has torn. <laughs> Whoops. Gently just put that back in the die as a crinkled piece. 
that. I think I've probably soaked them in here a bit too long for this crinkling effect. I should have done it before they got too saturated. So we'll just do two like that. And uh, it's got to the point now where they are very saturated. I do need to take the dye out and dry them. So I'm just going to unravel this. There we go. And just put that back in. And now because I've... I, oh, I've torn that one. <laughs> yeah, they're, they've gone quite soggy. I think this is 80 GSM. So let's just do one without without the dye. Just a dry piece of paper. See, I've torn that as well. So perhaps we want to do this with thicker paper. But this will just give me tearing sheets. And I just fill that up. I'm then using a distilled vinegar and I will just give it a good squirt. That is my preserved dye and it is good. Yeah, I've just got to put a label on it, which I'll forget to do. And uh, that, I just need to use that within the next three months which will be no problem at all. Right, I'm going to go away, take um, the tea bags away, dry this and we'll come back. And here is the result coming straight out of the oven. So this is what I put them on, just on a Teflon baking sheet, like that, all lined up. And I did them in a batch. And these are the crinkled ones here. And so that was a crinkled one but we're missing one it must have fallen off on the way through so you can either squash them overnight in a book or you can go and run a warm ironer over them for instant results okay i found our missing piece of paper and here we have all the sheets so that was the odd one. That was the one that had the least amount of dye time. It was crunched up um, before it went into the dye bath. But it has taken on some really interesting effects. You can see where the broken fibres of the crunching up or the screwing up of the paper, it has created a nice effect. So that was that one. Then in here, we've got this. These have been all of them. Have I ironed that one? I think I even ironed that one. Not very well. Uh, this one's been ironed. That's the creased one. And they are just really interesting textured pieces of paper done really simply as you watched. There's no extra added step there that you didn't see apart from them going into the oven on that baking sheet for about seven minutes and then just coming out running over a, a warm iron and here we have it so the papers are now ready to be used ripped torn collaged on painted on written on they've been aged and they're infinitely more interesting than this so these are perfect now to either put some paint splatters on or stamp on like we've done here and this is how you can then make interesting ephemera using your sheets of paper. Also got enough there to make a little mini journal. All you want now is a cover and that be a little booklet. So that's what you can do with the scraps that came off of the French Linen Botanical Journal if you've been following along and uh, looking at the measurements you will find that you've got this amount of papers left plenty that we can do with that that'll take us forward for many other projects uh, you can back junk mail to create tags they're really good size pieces so um, you can tear it again uh, again you can fold and we can you know it's, it's fun lots of fun there so that'll keep us going so I'm pleased we've got those. And then the other die 
is the avocado. So I have covered avocado dyeing in a previous video that we did last month in July for Junk Journal July and if you look under the Indian Summer playlist for the prompt for dyed uh, that it, it will be there and that'll show you how I make my dye. So it was number 12 prompt in the Indian Summer Journal and that is in the disc well I'll leave it I'll leave a little pop-up clickable place you can go to find that. So here I have my avocados, my avocado skins or shells and they're like that. So this is the bit that retains the dye. It has a pink dye and these are currently frozen. So that's how I store them. They're like that and I would take out you know, probably, I'll show you what I would do. Oh, look, there's a frosty stone, so I'd have that as well. And I'd probably take the equivalent of two avocados. I would put that into a saucepan, submerge the whole lot in um, water, and then I would bring it to a boil turn it down, simmer it, and I'd simmer that on a very, very low heat for about half an hour, maybe an hour. Uh, let it reduce down, strain it off in a, in a sieve, and then I would, with what I'm left with, the dye, I've been using this, another jam jar, um, that is the dye that you get. That's what you then dye your papers with. Avocado dye isn't as staining or as as a, aggressive as your tea, so I'm not too worried about not having the gloves. Um, it's a beautiful pinky, lovely dye really, and this one I've got the white vinegar in there. I've stored this from last time, so this is um, from a month ago. There's nothing funny going on. It's still a pretty colour. I don't know if it matures over, over time, whether I'll get a deeper colourway. So I've been told if I put in bicarbonate of soda, I may get a richer colour. And I think it probably depends on where the avocados are grown and where they come from, what variety they are, to what dye you get. So I can only go with the avocados that we have here in the shop, Absolutely. which could be different to what you get in other countries. Um, so that may affect the results. But I know in England I get a very pale but pretty pink colour not doing anything fancy to it I am just soaking it in the stain that is avocado dye it's just stewed down as if you would stew an apple or stewed fruit um, simmered on the hob for about half an hour 45 minutes to an hour depending on how much volume of water you've got and look at it on a spoon and see what depth of colour you have and if you've got something as strong as that then then that's when it's ready. I think we want a drop more. But it's just a really pretty dye and you can even start to see this peachy pink colour emerging. And I think I shall do one of these scrunchy ones as well. Um, it just gives a lovely effect. So where the fibres have now been a bit compromised, the dye will be sucked up into the creases. And that's all I do. Just going to let it sit there for 10 minutes and then put it back on my Teflon baking sheet in what's left of the heat of the oven. We'll hopefully end up with pink. And here we have the avocado and the tea stained all here ready to craft with. So the avocado dye, there's a different variation of colour on each piece depending on what dye and what deposit was on there, where it sat in the oven. That was the crinkled one, really lovely. Lovely um, textured paper there that could be torn up as part of collage 
and just the contrast there is really nice and then you've got a white background here to show you the colour that we started with and what we've been able to create with just a few tea bags and some scraps from the kitchen. So there we are everybody, I hope that that's been something that you'd like to have a little look at, a quiet craft, something that you can just do, sense of achievement at the end of it and then the ability to have your papers on hand when you need them and to just be able to create ephemera pieces which we will be able to do for the journal that we're currently dealing with which is the French Linen Botanical Journal. Uh, the playlist um, is on my YouTube channel, you'll be able to have a look at where we're at with all of this and uh, all the different dyed papers and how we can now integrate this colourway into this journal where I've already used some pink. I think this will be brilliant. And then the warm tones of the tea is all just going to complement what we've got going on here for this aged effect that is um, a, a Victorian slash Edwardian journal because it was all set around the time of 1901, which was at the age of the change of the Queen passing on and the king taking over and that is just reminiscent of exactly where we're at today okay guys so we will look at this and we'll carry on and we'll see how things panned out in history and we'll work through all of that in a wonderful crafting positive way so thanks for watching and above everything else just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now <music>